Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hit, man. Your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best. You heard? So, hey, what up, Don? How you doing, queen? I see you doing your thing, putting, putting proverbs, putting the proverb scripture in one of your posts. I felt that one. I felt it. <laughs> I felt that like your gifts will make way for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was loving that. I was feeling that. Um, Don, I'm, lo I'm loving the energy you're bringing. You're, you're bringing the, uh, a no nonsense. Um, Hey, the, the pity party is over. You've, you've cried long enough. You want, if you, if you got time, jump on live too, by the way, if you want to jump on, <laughs> Um, uh, you know what I mean? The pity party is over. That shit is dead. Um, let's get it cracking. I, I, I love that energy. You like, like, although I got kicked out of the Navy or whatever, but I was always about that. Look, man, the, the, the pity party is over. Strap up, clip up. Let's go. We're going into war. And that's, that's really what a lot of this stuff is, man is that we we do go into war. Yeah, come on in. I wanted to ask you about that too. Hey. There she is. I'm out hey, here hey. with my sons getting some last minute um, Thanksgiving necessities. Yes, yes. But um, thank you Shout so much for that. Shout out to the fun. Shout out to the homie. <laughs> <laughs> they in their phones. Say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> hey, what up? What up from Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I am, um, my attitude towards everything notary has completely evolved. Really? And oh, I would me, imagine that it'll continue to do exactly that the more that I see out here. I was I was gonna ask you that. I was like, okay, there was one live that you did. I don't know if you saw a video or something happened. I was like, something sparked that interview right there. It was it just got it had you like on ten. You was like, yeah. look. <laughs> I, I I can always detect those little nuggets and I was like, I wonder what the heck it was right. that got John so fired up to say, you know what? I'm going to turn on this camera. I, I feel sick. My nose is running. I don't care. I'm going to give y'all this work. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and you went in. What, exactly. what, like, what happened? Exactly. What, well, what, I'm, what I'm seeing is, first of all, what I'm seeing, which is driving me insane it's really making me and there's nothing i can do about it so i'm trying to get my emotions and check over it but mm -hmm. how do you have your stamp for so long and you're you're either in every class for two and three years or you've had your stamp for all of this time and you still don't know what to do with it. Why is that? It's because you haven't gotten off your ass and looked for ways that you can make money with your stamp. I, I agree. I've seen that a lot too. I, I have noticed that that is me and tech up, you know, that tech tech is like tech is my brother from the same mother, mother. Yeah. Land. <laughs> yes. um, and we build on that all the time and we we said that to, that came up in a couple of conversations where it was like how is it that people jump from course okay i'll give you an example somebody had called me they wanted to do a discovery call to see if my program okay, would work for them right and uh -huh. then they said yeah i took uh andre hatch's course and i took text course and i was like <laughs> You already got the the two goats. It like what the hell you want me for? Like what do you need me for? Dude? It's like you already got the the two badasses in the thing. I was like, so in how much game. money you make? I've made no money in the. I was like, that's fucking impossible. Exactly. That's fucking, no. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got the kids in the background. Damn. My kid. My kids have heard fucking before. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I hard keep it one hundred. I, I keep it absolutely one hundred. <laughs> no. So. Yeah. I. Um, I said, what is going on? Like, how? How is that even possible? So i I'm with you. I. I. I wonder about that too. So that what did you is come crazy? Up with? Hmm. What What was the conclusion on that? Well, at the end of the day, you know, she's coming to my. <laughs> and, and but the thing is, is that she's been coming. To we we started doing classes around the same time over a year ago. So I mm. just you know I just don't I just don't get it and. I'm, I'm having life happen. I, I'm, I'm literally, I just moved. I'm going through divorce, 27 years of marriage, okay, together, 30 plus years. And now, mind you, everything is cool. It's, it's amicable. It's what needs to happen. But, you know, it's a major thing for me to be in this position, and especially yeah. at my age. But that's another story. But I'm, I'm still doing what needs to be done. I had a death in the family. I'm 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 doing, you know, handling this situation with the kids and the, the holidays and this whole thing. But the work doesn't stop. You you cannot allow different things that happen affect what it is that you need to do in terms of your responsibilities. And I think that it's easy for them to say, I have this going on, I have that going on, so that's why I can't. Mm. No, the reason you can't is because you are too lazy to. Oh, take you that. You are too take lazy that. to. I could go and, and thank you, whoever just said that, that they're proud of me. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm proud of you, too. I know you that I didn't know you had all that going on. And and you, you still know, keep a yeah. smile. You, you still keep that hair on fleek. I, I, <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> I see you. You know, I, I'm doing doing what needs to be done. And I just feel like it's too easy for people to curl up in corner and, and give up. You were given your vision and you accepted your vision, but you did not accept that in order for that to really come to fruition, you've got to work. You cannot continue taking all of these classes and you're not implementing the things that you're learning. You can't go from Andre to, I mean, from from Tiger to Tech to Andre to what? What exactly do you think you're gonna get? <laughs> what are you looking for? A magic potion, right? I know one of them gonna have it. One of them gonna go have yeah. the magic potion. <laughs> the the magic is you getting on the grind and you staying on that hustle. And you doing what it takes. You got to get up early. Sometimes you got to get up at five o'clock in the morning. Use that time between five and eight to do what needs to be done. When if you work a nine to five, when you get off, get your butt down at least three or four. To, you know what? It doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take. It does take a time commitment, but it yeah. doesn't take you doing eight hours after you no. just got off work. Not at all. You know what I mean? Commit to just a few hours after you get off work and dive in there and work on your dream. It pays off, but you've got to be willing to work. I don't know what's wrong. I I, I don't know. I, I don't I'm lost. You know, so you know what I, I, I think just on the level of, you know, when I was coming into more of my consciousness, right? As as mm -hmm. far as being a black man in America. Yes. But it was I had to hear the message repeatedly from mm. many different sources, right? Mm. And that may be what people are experiencing. They, you, you, you have to think mm. of it this way, uh, Dawn, is that we have to shed the miseducation that we've been plagued with for over, you know, since we were little kids. I love that. So, so now that they're coming into the, the this real this new reality of being an entrepreneur. We're stripping that. We we have to strip all of that, that education of like, no, you can't run your own business. No, you have this against you. No, um, ninety five percent of entrepreneurs fail in their first. Like they have to like coat themselves mm. and, callous, and callous their mind to just have 
the confidence to even approach it. So that I that might that. I, I thought of that that might be what they're going through. You know what, Tiger? Honestly, I never even considered that. So you know the type of person I am. I got mm-hmm. on your live, you demonstrated the brochure, and what did I do? You I went and I did the brochure. You a different breed though. Don, come on, come on. You a different breed. You you cut you cut way different. You you have a different cloth on you. <laughs> and so but and you know what? I think I need to settle down on my little expectation of thinking that everybody is supposed to dive in there. I'm gonna have to readjust because um I have people that are asking me questions and things like that. And I want to help. I really do want to help, but my I'm having trouble within myself. I need to elevate myself and understand that things like what you just told me, I never even considered that. Now I did consider that, okay, maybe you don't have a lot of experience as an entrepreneur and you know, you need a couple of tools. All right, well, here's your tools. Now go, go do it, (laughs) go make it work. And I need to, um, probably learn a little more patience um, and understanding because that's a, that's a very, very strong point because we're conditioned a certain way, and especially if you're coming from uh, W-2. I have noticed that the mindset, um, by some of the things that they say, mm-hmm. I, I see you, you don't have the right mindset. You don't quite understand yet what this means, what being the CEO means. Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. So Socrastic so, so had a question. Can I make $1,200 a month as a notary? What's your answer to that? Absolutely. And aim higher. Indeed. Absolutely. Indeed. You can make $1,200 in one day as a notary. Yeah, I, saw, I saw that post that you put up. That was, uh, you know, to a post deal. A lot of cats don't even make that running 15, 15 appointments. Right. You did that with two apostilles, knocked that out, and made a 1100 Easy. Yep. Easy. Easy. One sale, you know, one apostille this week, that's okay. You know, normally I, I'd be kind of like, oh, my God, what, you know. But I, I learned that I need to um, stop applying so much pressure to myself, give myself a little bit of grace. It's okay to have a bad week, bad month, whatever, but it's better than having nothing. And when you say $1,200 for the month, think bigger, think bigger, yeah. go think 10, 15. You, 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 know, you, you can do, especially if you get into higher ticket items like, um, um, estate planning and apostilles, you really, you can do very well. You can do very well. So think 10,000 for the month, 15,000 for the month, not just a 1,200. Yeah, I mean, cause there's it, no cap. There's really no cap on how much money you can make in this industry. There, that's there is fact. one. That's there's a fact. cap. There's a cap in, in, in your everyday job and not knocking any everyday job because you can learn how to leverage and partner that shit so you yes. can get loans and do a man listen I, i'm gonna do something on that one day i'm gonna do a video on that <laughs> because you guys can really leverage your job to really kick it up but yes. if they tell you forty thousand in your job for the whole year when you mm. step into this entrepreneurial life there is no ceiling it 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 it's dictated by the amount of effort and the amount of time that you want to put into. And I'm not talking about effort, like physical, like I have to, uh, you know what I mean? Lifting up center blocks, that type of effort. (laughs) I'm talking about being an entrepreneur is a intellectual sport. You know what I mean? Like it, you have to leverage your, what we do, Dawn, we leverage the hell out of that stamp. That stamp ain't worth what? But how we position our company, how we structure our bi- uh, business and get that's business it. funds and credit and all of this stuff off of that stamp. That's it. That, that's where it's at. So you have mental- to be creative and you, you have to be willing to take the risks. Um, a- another thing I noticed, they are um, afraid of failure. Everything has to be 
perfect, you know, or they don't move and, and things like that. And that is not acceptable. Mm. It, that's not acceptable. You must take action and it's okay to fail. There's a lot of good lessons in failing. I'm just yeah. like I'm failing at these people not letting me over. <laughs> but yes, I love how you put that. I think it's so important. I think it's so important that you you get creative and you put yourself in spaces where you learn to utilize your stamp and to make your company into something amazing. Um, but don't be afraid of things like failure and, and putting in your, your time. I, I, someone asked me a question mm -hmm. and they were like, why are you always driving up to the secretary of state? Why don't you just use a courier and, you know, well, do it this fun. way? Look at, the, look at the question that's on there. That's funny. You said secretary of state. <laughs> do you need to be located? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this and, and then um, jump over to it. So just, you know, I'm four hours away from the Secretary of State. And oh. we go up twice a month to the Secretary oh. of State. But before I was going up twice a week, you know, every week, just whenever I got it, you know, because I was really, really pushing my expedited service. Um, now, because of just wear and tear on the car and me being dog okay. tired, um, I kind of, you know, got it narrowed down now to where we do it twice a month. But the reason that I personally go is because number one, guys, I'm, I'm some kind of like a maniac because I love the, the grit and, and the grind. I, I love being on the road going to handle my business. Mm. Right. I, I love that. I love the feeling of it. Um, my tire, something went, went wrong with the tire. We had to pull over headed and it was, it's like an adventure for me, you know, and I want to have the experiences of going and doing this so I can share it with other people. I can say, you know, these are some things, some expectations, some unforeseen things that may come up like the tire, uh, blowing out and we had to do all that, you know, mm -hmm. um, and dealing with the, they know us up there. Like when we're there, they will ignore everybody else and walk over to Notary Nation. Nice. You know, I mean, I love it. I, I just absolutely love that we have built that relationship with them. And I will probably continue to go for about another six months. I want to try to experience every possible thing that could happen up there before I send someone else in, in my stead. But no, you don't have to live close. Um, it's up to you how you do it. You don't have to be a maniac and hop on the road and stuff like I do. You can actually have someone that you work with who knows what to do. Um, be sure that you have everything in place in terms of like cover letters and whatever else that may be needed. Know how to send your documents if you're going to do um, a courier service. But you know, that's what also makes you an incredible uh, uh, teacher, mentor, is that you're willing to go through that, right? Thank um, you, Tiger. There, there, are, there are practitioners in this world and there are theorists. And I don't choose to learn from theorists because all they could do is like, hmm, in this situation, Dawn would probably do something like this instead of going to Dawn and say, yes. hey, Dawn, how would you handle this situation? The difference is, is that Dawn actually lives it and that theorizer can only imagine what Dawn is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking for an instructor, a mentor, a coach, and stuff like that, look for somebody that's actually doing it and not talking about it. Amen. Amen. Okay. We have some more questions, too. That's, we got hella questions on here. <laughs> where, where you guys come from? <laughs> I, uh, I've never even seen this feature on Instagram before. Oh, really? No, it's like it opens up a whole different tab and they can ask yeah, questions. Yeah, they, they click the little question mark with the circle around it. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so another question for you. What motivates you to live the life as a notary? <laughs> great question. <laughs> that is a great question. So 
it's not that I'm living the, the notary life. I'm living the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial life. Fact. And so it doesn't matter if I were doing notary or if I were doing car sales, you, you know, it, whatever my business is, I want to throw a thousand percent of myself into it. And so I'm motivated because I thoroughly enjoy being my own boss. I'm not a good employee. I don't have any problems admitting that. I want to show my children that you can have time freedom and financial freedom by just creating it for yourself. You don't need anyone to give you anything. You educate yourself, you put your head down, and you make it happen. Yeah. <clears throat> one, uh, one of my favorite CEOs, Casey Cooper, uh, she, she just rolled out her first book. Um, and the subheader of the books, the subtitle of the book says, no one's coming to save you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, exactly. yeah, that's... Here go another one. Um, what made you start a notary business? I had a girlfriend that uh, we were like business besties and she would come to my house at, well, my condo, not my house. She'd come to the condo every month and every month we would sit down and discuss different tr strategies for the following month to try to improve our business. This is when I was doing keto coaching, which by the way, I'll be picking back up the first quarter. So hit me up if you're interested in that. What kind of, what kind of coaching is that? Keto. Oh, keto. I gotcha. mean, I was in their deep, heavy body snatched up, but that's another story. So um, she would say to me, man, I got all of these signings. Now, mind you, at this particular time, I don't understand the language. I don't know what she's talking about. But she kept saying, I've got all these signings. I, I got to go see all these people and I just don't have time to do it. And I would say, well, girl, you know, I'll do it for you. Just let me know. <laughs> you know, I'll go and I'll take care of it for you. But I didn't understand what she was talking about. So she was saying to me, you know, look into it, look into it. And she did that to me for like five months. And mm -hmm. every time she would leave my house, I promise you, I would walk her to her car, go right back in and start doing whatever I was doing. I would just completely ignore it. But this one day, I don't know what it was. It was just the spirit. And I said, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just hop on YouTube and see what in the world she's talking about. The first thing I saw is probably what everyone sees, $10,000 a month. And I said, hold up now. Oh, girl, didn't tell me nothing about no $10 a month. I would have $10,000 a month. I would have been looked into this, right? So um, I became obsessed with YouTube University, um, looking for different people that look like me who are out here doing it. And I right. thought, well, let me go ahead and see. I always like to have a team. I don't know what my problem is with that, but I, I reached out to my mom. Um, and my daughter, my daughter's a paralegal. My mom needed something to do. So I reached out to them and I said, hey guys, you know, let's do a notary company and let's take over the territory. <laughs> and so, you know, so we got um, all of us, you know, we took our little Florida test and everything. We got our, our things, but at the time, I was focused on becoming a loan signing agent through the NNA. And, you know, because that's all you, that's what you mainly see out there. So that's where my focus was. And I had those guys focused with me on that. Um, and of course, you know, since then, things have completely changed. But um, yeah, that's, that's what got me started is just meeting with my business bestie, coming up with ideas and, you know, trying to be creative and just pouring into each other. One of those uh, iron sharpens iron kind of sessions uh, once a month. And, but, um, you know, here we are, here we are. <laughs> we are today. Yeah. Marquis said, P. Diddy. I guess that's my new name now. <laughs> <laughs> it fits. It fits. 
That's a that's a Kim Yanni that 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 blessed me with that name. Yes, I was like, I'll yes. take it. <laughs> so she says, "When do you go live?" I have to go. So uh, I have no scheduled time. <laughs> right. I just I just go as as God say, "Yo, go live." <laughs> I just go live, <laughs> and then you know whoever gets impacted gets impacted. Uh, but I think there's a way you could get notified when I get live when I go live and stuff. So yep. mm -hmm. yeah do that um but no nah, there, there's no schedule i i like to be free you know what i mean yeah I, I, I like structure and i have schedules and i do time blocking and stuff but there's certain parts of my life i just look i don't want no chains around my neck my ankles yes. i go where i go you see me where you see me right <laughs> And also, his life self-destruct. So keep that in mind as well when you catch one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. They, all these videos. I've been self-destructing these videos for a year. Great. <laughs> Consistent. <laughs> Here go another question. Uh, what's one thing you wish you would have known when you started? That I didn't need the NNA to, to do... <laughs> Shot fired! <laughs> Fuck you, NNA! <laughs> Punk asses. I'm a snake. I don't like y'all niggas anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing that I wish I had known. Straight facts. For real. Oh, For real. Like, they, 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 they running this notary. but Y'all ain't running shit. Not at all. Not at Stop. all. Stop. Not at all. It's a notary social media site. That's what it is. Now, I will tell you this. I will say this, okay? If you are new and you're doing, um, you're out, you know, doing different types of documents or even loan signings, the benefit of the membership, if you are new and you're still learning, is that you can call them on the spot and you can get that, someone yeah. to help you. That is a fact. That is dope. That that service right there is dope that they offer for sure. Yeah. But but outside of that, mm -mm. no. You don't need to take their their different tiers of loan signing courses and this and that and the other to learn to be a loan signing agent. Um, a lot of what they did was just things that not only are you not going to remember, but it's not applicable to real world situations on a lot of that. Now, there mm -hmm. are probably a million people that will buck against me on that, but I'm telling you right now, save your coins when it comes to that if you're not already involved. Save your coins when it comes to that. Get out there, make your mistakes, do what it is that you need to do to learn to be a good loan signing agent if that's where you want to focus. Um, but that's the one thing I can say that I wish I would have known that it, that was unnecessary. It was unnecessary money and every time and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't have too much of a problem with NNA. Not, actually, I don't have any problem with NNA. I mean, they provide a service. I'm sure it helped a lot of people over time. Um, exactly. Was, my, yeah, my, my thing with them was I don't know if it was some of my students, some some of the people that I talked to, is that they felt that they were their services and was insignificant unless they got the NNA stamp. Yes. That was my problem with NNA. I was like, who told you that? And why would you believe such a lie? I mean, that that that's <laughs> damaging, right? That's yes. damaging to think that. You, your services, and you are insignificant unless NNA approves you and gives you a stamp that, okay, you're official now. Right. I'm the person to tell me I'm official or or not official. Okay. No, you were official when you got mailed your stamp. <laughs> yeah, official you before you even got the stamp, that. right? <laughs> right. You you was official before you even got the joint. Yes. Uh, yes, that part. That part. because at the end, because at the end of the day, like for me, I didn't, I didn't have my. <coughs> I started agency before I started because before I was a notary. So okay. four four months later, I became a notary. 
but I was getting that notary money early without yeah. being a notary. Okay. But it was like, but let the NNA say it. You're not official. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're you're not part of this group, this camp, this whatever, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. But you know what? <clears throat> because I gotta say that their um their presence um is really heavily established within the community. And when you're new, you look for something that you need to belong to or something that is going to um, educate you or help, you know, propel you towards your dream. But you don't understand until after the fact. And some people still don't because some people are completely sold out to them. And that's totally fine if that's what works for you. Um, but as someone new, you, you, you go towards what you see the most of because you think that that this must be it because this is what everyone is talking about. And that's not always the way. And it's uh, the way I see it, Dawn, it's genius marketing. Exactly. Because if you get in people's faith enough and yes. enough people are talking about it and people are putting your logo on their business cards, on their brochures, and that's you know crazy. what I mean, on their websites, I was like, dude, yeah, you guys are sick with the marketing. Yes. Imagine. Imagine someone is using your logo every single on their business cards, on their everything that is actually their business, and you're getting all of that free marketing. I thought it's I had genius. to have that logo. Yeah. Until I realized nobody uh, asked about it and didn't even know what what exactly. they were. Exactly. I've never <laughs> in, in five years. Not one of my clients say, um, are you NNA certified? Like, That's right. dude, when are you coming out and how much is it? Exactly. <laughs> I wish I did take a phone call and be like, hey, why is your price so high? Well, I'm NNA certified. They'll be like, who? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're what certified? <laughs> clients want to know, can you execute their documents properly? That's it. That's all they want to know. They are not concerned about your memberships. <laughs> not at all. I go another one. Is it easy to get into the notary and scale your business? That's oh, a great I love that. the scale part. Yeah. Now that's a good one. So is it easy to get into notary? I would say yes. I don't think it matters what state you're in. I would say that your level of easy or hard depends on your attitude towards what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So if you tell yourself that this is amazing, this is fun, I'm excited, I'm enthusiastic, that's going to be your experience. If you say, oh my God, this is hard, I can't believe this, what am I doing, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. whatever you tell yourself, you're right. Okay? So that's right. the first thing. And the next thing in terms of scaling, oh my God, yeah. yes, yeah, that, you, that that's right what there. you want to do. <laughs> so what well, was, well, okay, because I, I love the way you phrased that question. Now that's something that doesn't get spoken about at all. Yeah. Scaling a notary business. Yeah. Well, speak on that, Dawn. So for me, okay, I can only talk from my experience. When the state said that I can charge $10 a stamp, I automatically knew that's not going to work for me, mm -hmm. right? So you want to look into options. Now, I spoke about this on my live the other day, and I was telling you guys, just because there are a variety of different ways that you can use your stamp, it doesn't mean that you need to jump in here and now you're a wedding, wedding officiating, you're, you're this, you're that, you're the other. Take your time on, on the way that you scale your business, but definitely scale your business. Mm -hmm. So my idea for me and the gang with Notary Nation, well, we're going to learn these two things that I found that have the highest profit margin for us. So mm -hmm. we focus on estate planning and we focus on apostilles. But guess what? Mm -hmm. We are we we can do other things, right? We've performed weddings. We've done that. Um, we've done you know just regular. Hey, I need a notary for my son's tattoo. We we do that kind of stuff. 
the, our primary focus is those two major things. Now, what we will do in the upcoming year is figure out how to broaden even more on the, the end of apostilles. How can we offer even more? I have two paralegals on my team to do document creating for those who need documents. Um, there's just all kinds of things that you can do. You have to just get creative and do something that is going to propel your business in the direction you want to go in. But be clear on your vision. Do not yeah. scatter yourself around doing all these 5 million different things. And then <clears throat> you don't know what to say for an example. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still getting over my cold, but let's say you get an apostille today. And this one um, was a birth certificate that needed to go to another state um, and et cetera, et cetera. And you, you're able to accomplish this. You get it done, your client's happy, and now you go back to doing your loan signing and whatever else it is, and you don't see another apostille for two months. Well, the next time you get one, first of all, you don't have the experience. So now you have to start all over again. It leaves room for error. Um, it leaves room for you becoming very frustrated with what it is that you're doing. Choose something, stick with that, be a badass at that, and then go ahead and add other things on um, for scaling. I love that. So my takeaway from what you just said is to specialize. Yes, that's the word. It, right? And, and and I do see notaries put a laundry list of services that they offer. And it's like, it's confusing. So, and sometimes it, it may be hard to put yourself in the customer's shoes. But if you're able to do that, if you're able to transfer your mind and see it from a customer's point of view, when they see a long list like that, it gets overwhelming. Yeah. Because let's just say you had, uh, well, most people, well, we had a question that just came through that says, what is an apostille, right? But oh. imagine, imagine you needed an apostille, but you don't know what it is. Yes. But you yes. put it on this laundry list of s services you offer, so it makes everything else look very lukewarm. Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, we specialize here and here. You want to explore more of what an apostille is? Click this link. Now you give a full detail of exactly what a apostille is with a checklist, with a cheat sheet, all kind of great shit. Exactly. But if you have like 20 things that you would have to do that for like 20 different items. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, um, and apostille to answer that is a seal, if you will, that only comes from your secretary of state. Um, and it's usually for, um, it could be for deeds or um, vital records, um, federal, you know, FBI background checks. And there are just different ways of, of doing those things. And it is very lucrative and, and, and primarily um, what I'm finding is that it's lucrative because they need it yesterday. Mm. When they call you, they need it yesterday. And what that means for my business is that now I get to charge you again because mm -hmm. I'm now going to charge you for expedited services. And I do advertise expedited services most of the time because I want them to know Hey, you know, come on over. And, and you know what? They have the money. I don't care yeah. if they're from wherever, we, you know, and they are, hey, I just want you to get this done. And you know what? They're so thankful, too. When you come back, it's almost like they're surprised that it was done. You know, they're really, really grateful for the service. So, yeah, look into that and find out. Um, one thing I want to say, though, about that really quick. I don't want to, you know, talk forever, but make sure that it makes sense for whatever area you live in to even start that. Because for an example, there's a young lady that I was speaking with and she was just like, oh my God, you know, I want to do this. I want to do this. But she lives on the Georgia, Florida line. Well, guess what? 
no one lives there. <laughs> you know, now in my area, Central Florida area, it's a melting pot. Yeah. I have people from all over the world here. That's a fact. So see if it makes sense for you to add that as a service. Hey, before I, before I let you go, Dawn, what offers do you have going on for this holiday season? And ha in case I don't talk to you by then, happy holidays. Thank you. Right to you and the family. Thank um, you. What, you. I know you have a couple of offers going on right now. Share with the people that's on here. I'm sure they want to take part of uh, whatever you have going on. Awesome, awesome. So I have December 3rd, I have a lock-in, guys. Let me tell you about this lock-in. So the lock-in is from 6 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. And you may say to yourself, oh, my God, what the hell? <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't expect anyone to be there from 6 a.m. until 9, except me. Um, but <laughs> um, we are going to be taking our headshots for the new year. We're going to be um, creating different things that we will use to help us get through first quarter. But we're also going to have some fun. Like we're going to do um, a gift exchange. We're going to do vision board for the first quarter. We're going to mm -hmm. do a lot of things that are fun as well. But um, when I get into my zone, when I'm working and building for my business, I spend hours in that space. So Sundays are usually my days to lock in for that, right? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm there, I'm trying to come up with, with, with all types of ideas and this and that. And I'm going to have speakers there that are going to talk about business credit. They're going to talk about loan signing. They're going to talk about mindset. They're going to talk about wedding officiating. Um, so it's going to be an amazing time that you do not want to miss. And especially for the price that I have it at. Now, I am going tonight, I'm going to create a Zoom link for those who are not in the Florida area and cannot come over to my office to attend physically. Um, you will be able to tune in on Zoom. And that is my last thing that I'm doing uh, for the year, but it will be an annual event. So how do they uh, just go to your Instagram page and then hit the bio link? Yes, yeah. sir. Just click the link in my bio. All the details are there. Um, you'll be able to get registered right there. Um, and also, you know, just we'll have some things coming up for the first quarter in terms of opportunities for education. So just keep rocking with me. Keep your, um, you know, keep watching my IG for things that we'll be doing to help you expand and grow. So you guys, I put her, um, her IG handle in the chat. Go over there, go check it out. I mean, I wish I was there, to be honest with you, because I talk about people <laughs> doing photo shoots all the time, because I'm going to be honest, your pictures is whack, baby. <laughs> the shits, shits look like you, put, you, you took a picture on the flip phone, not even a goddamn <laughs> smartphone, a flip phone, and you smacked it up on everything. And when people want to invite you to uh, speak somewhere or maybe do a podcast or just have a professional look. It looks whack as hell. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm super excited that you're doing this photo shoot and you're getting people pre presentation all polished up and yes. looking good and presentable because it's got to open a whole lot of opportunities for them. Awesome. So shout out to you. That that lock in sounds heavy. Man, heavy. listen, Tiger. Hopefully next year I'll I'll have it to where it's big enough. And you'll do me the honor of coming and being one of the guests to speak to the people. Say less. Hey, you might, uh, you know, depending on, and I, I do see a really great outcome for this one. You might take that show on the road. I would absolutely love that. That's a great idea. Now, that is a great idea. Wow. I love that. I, 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 that do what I, do. I do what I do, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I look at everything as crack cocaine you know what i mean like it can, okay get that on the you. hey they do they do they do that on the on that block over there well, well, go, go pitch them, man. Go pitch them. <laughs> that's why i love rocking with the best absolutely absolutely well don i am so happy that you were able to join us everybody i, I know you guys got some hell of great information gems just mind shift right um the fire in the belly again, 
for some of you guys. Some of you guys needed a kick in your ass. Dawn <laughs> gave you that proverbial kick in your ass to get it cracking. Yo, like, like, let's show our sister love. This is what we do. Thank so, you. Dawn, thank you so much for being on the show. And I will talk Absolutely. to you soon, baby. All right. Sounds good. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah, you guys. Wasn't that dope? Wasn't that dope? Tell me, I won't be bringing the heat. Oh, Dominique, where you at, girl? Come on, man. Hey, hey, H N A. Why don't you tap in? Tap in, H N A. Why don't you tap in, H N A? Huh? <laughs> I'm bring, I'm bringing out the flavor on this Thanksgiving Eve. Thanksgiving Eve. Um. Hey, come on. Come on live with me, baby. Uh, some of you guys don't see because, uh, see, we have this we have this really, really stealth group called Ghost Squad, and we do some things behind the scenes that, you know, you just can't share to the public. But once in a while, when we click up, link up, it's on and popping like Jimmy Crack Horn. What up, what up baby? <laughs> yeah. How are you? You heard. <laughs> you heard. How you doing, Queen? Good, good. Just seeing last minute stuff for Thanksgiving. Aha. Uh -huh. What were you getting some groceries? Yeah, I had to get some groceries and stuff. I swear that the the prices for groceries now is fucking unbelievable right now. I know, and I needed like I needed pink beans. I needed stuff to make rice or whatever. So I had to get like they even went up on like the sofrito. I said, why? Why? I'm like, that shit used to be like a dollar. I'm like, why is it? Nobody uses Sofrito. Why is it so much? But whatever. Hey, I wanted to, I, first of all, I wanted to give you a shout out to what you're doing with HNA and and your podcast. I, I, listen, I love all that shit. I am yeah, like, a, you show so I'm much love and support. I appreciate it. I'm a hoarder of your shit right now. So like for real, like it's it's so dope. Um where where did this spark come from where it's like okay, this year like okay, I remember Dominique, she was doing her thing on Clubhouse for a while, right? Yeah. I never been on Clubhouse, but believe it or not, your name was circulating outside of Clubhouse. Uh-huh. You know, like, you know, <laughs> right? So I was like I I kept hearing about this Dominique, Dominique person, right? But now you, you've taken it. I don't know. Are you still doing Clubhouse or no? I'm still on there, just not as much as I used to be because mm -hmm. it got messy. Like Clubhouse can be toxic. I just don't like when, like you know, senior notaries start treating like new notaries like shit, or they start mm -hmm. being like, "Oh, read your primer." Like shut the fuck up, because not everything's in the primer. And if somebody, it takes a lot of courage to ask anybody for help right yeah and i just felt like a lot of the answers i was getting plus that old ass man tried to come for me and i don't like that because mm -hmm. like i would be on stages with him she would be cool and then next thing you know he's sending me something from like an attorney because i use the term notary and success in one of my pop-up classes what? and he said that he trademarked he has notary success system, so he trademarked notary success system, which is cool. But I didn't say notary success system, and he's only been a notary two years. He looks old as fuck, no success, still putting on a yellow vest, but that's not my business. Either way, I don't like the fact, because, you know, we're New Yorkers. So, like, if I had beef with you or I felt a certain way with you, I would, like, DM you or I would call you, and I'm like, yo, Tiger, like, you moving funny, man. Like, all due respect yeah, yeah. is how I'm feeling. But for you to be on stages with me and be, like, fake and fraudulent, like, on Clubhouse and shit, but then try to, like, come at my neck, like, on the low, like, I thought that was foul. And I don't, yeah. move, I don't move with people that, like, move funny because I don't have time for that yeah. because I don't move funny, you know? Every time I help somebody, it's genuine. Every time I link with somebody, it's genuine. So I, I don't mess with that, and I don't like it at all. You know, so, it, it, it. People I'm usually not, I'll be on there, room. but I don't go in rooms. I'll go in rooms for like maybe two other people on Clubhouse because they ain't never snake me. They don't mm -hmm. move funny. They show love and respect, and I'm cool with that. 
But anybody outside of that, no, they got to pay me because I won't. You know, it's interesting because people, people will come at you when you're making waves. Mm -hmm. When you ain't making no waves, nobody give a fuck about you. You just like, eh, whatever. They ain't going nowhere. But it's when you make waves, then they're like, okay, let me see if I can either slow, stop or slow down or inconvenience them in some type of way. And then see, all I've that person never, does. I've never been the person to try to sneak anybody, whether they're moving waves or not. Like, you know, I've come to you. We have people come at us, people on the team. And I generally mm -hmm. keep my mouth shut. Like, I keep it pushing. Like, I show love and support. I never I never try to piss on anybody's parade. I don't move like that because I feel like that's how you block your blessings, right? So if I'm not acting shady and I'm not messing with your money or if I'm not stealing content from you, leave me alone. Let me be where I am. But it just, like, at the end of the day, as notaries, we're technically colleagues. We have different service areas. We do different shit. We have different niches. Like, I've been doing this shit for a long-ass yeah. time. So for these new motherfuckers to be coming for me off YouTube, like, nigga, I don't even be there. <laughs> like, like yeah. leave my ass on TikTok and Instagram. Like, leave me alone. Like, I'm good. I'm good where I'm at. You're safe. Leave me alone. So for me to have three kids and... You know, all the shit I've been through. So then it like I take it personally because when I help people, I take it personal. Why? Because my notary shit got me out of some sticky situations. It got me out of domestic violence. It got me free with my kids. It pays for my kids' autism services. Like my notary shit is my soul. It's my heart. It was there for me. You never forget what dug you out of a hole, right? So then for these people, and you could tell when a motherfucker never been through nothing how they come at yeah. people and how they show no type of respect, no type of empathy, no type of anything. And I hate it. Like it makes it so toxic. It makes it so toxic. Like I'd be the first person. I'd be like, listen, I can't dance. I think, I think I'm shaped like one of them Lego characters, but my ass be on TikTok. I'd be giving you Diddy <laughs> shoulders, but shit, I'm marketing. <laughs> like I'm here. That's you right. want to see me? <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Well, there's a, there's an old saying, uh, Dominique, that says, if you don't have no haters, you ain't doing shit. True, but it's so annoying because, you know, we're New Yorkers. So I'd be like, see, in New York, correct me if I'm wrong, if you come at somebody, they assume you know how to fight. Right? You can't come they at people. Hope, they, would, they would hope that you don't know how to fight. But... I know, but you can't come at people <laughs> And then try to like mess with them and they money and they bag and they're yeah, yeah. Oh no, you yeah. And then yeah, you got you gotta expect to get clapped back. You have to. You have to be able to clap back. And then it's hard for me because I'm like, my mouth is nasty, you know, it is really bad. Like professionally, I have complete etiquette, amazing verbiage, like absolutely. But if you poke the wrong button, yeah. You, like my mouth is bad so it gets a lot. it gets hard for me because i'm like man they don't know like it'd be dominique from the projects and shit you don't want to be <laughs> dominique from the project yeah I'm like, they don't know <laughs> they don't know like you can't you can't be triggering people like that them been through stuff like you can't do that but i don't know i like i just i feel like i like being around people that are genuine and i feel like everything that you do everything like you dropped gems. You created that group for everybody to come in. And we're all in different areas. We're all doing different shit. We all tap in. Like, you created a platform for, like, to show people, let people speak, let people... Like, you You gave me a lot of strength when I was on, your, on Notary War Room expressing my story and, like, things that just, like, came up. Like, and it wasn't rehearsed. It wasn't nothing. You asked a question. I done broke down. But then I was like, but anyway... Because, you know, that's me. <laughs> but right. it's like, it takes a lot. And I like putting myself around people that are genuine, that hustle, that that show love, that shout out. And I love it. I love it. I love it and a thousand you, you percent. Know, that's, that, that's why you're so important to the Ghost Squad group is because, like, that is our safe haven, right? Like, this is where we regroup. 
this is where we clip up, we 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 lock and load, and then we be like, all right, we back at your ass again. Because yes. the world, the world can beat you up. It can beat you down. There's a lot of things out here that can just like take the 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 very fiber and energy out of you. You have to have a rest haven where you could come back and be like, all right, you guys, like, yo, I'm struggling with this shit. Like, hey, I need some of that ghost squad shit. And then you you get that battery back in your back. Mm -hmm. Woo! Like, you you dropped bars earlier. I was at Walmart, and I looked, and I said, look at him. He ain't playing. I was like, man, let me get on it. <laughs> let me get on it. Let me get on it. And it's like people don't realize because you know we're content creators, right? So we post a yeah. lot, we be on, we be live, we be sharing, we be giving information. But people really sleep on the fact that not only are we juggling y'all and social media, we have families, we got spouses. Well, you got a spouse, but I'm almost there. You know, I'm chilling. <laughs> but it's like you have, we have lives. We have things that we're juggling. We have things, and then while st still making sure that we're showing up for y'all, we're we're genuine. We're still putting out good information. We're still trying to give y'all the information you need to succeed. We're still giving you information that we're learning from our, either our mistakes, our lessons, anything in between. Yeah. When we're let me ask, let me ask years in, it's hard. Let me ask you a question. What what have your what has your experience been like since you started the, the, the whole podcast situation? Has it been, um, yeah, I, I'm not even going to put the words in your mouth. Like, what what has that been like for you? Because I see you pour a lot of time and energy into that. I do. Um, I'm going to say this. Pros and cons. Sure. Pros, I love, I think I'm. It, what makes it easier is the people that I'm with on there. Mm -hmm. um, if I was by myself, I feel like it would be more draining um, okay. because we're all different, right? And I feel like, you know, Gina, she adds so much. And it's like she adds that grit. And it's like her strength and her story. Like, everybody's like, Dominique, you're so strong. Like, how did you blah, blah. And I'm like, y'all ain't met Gina. Like, shit, I'd be damned if I crawl on a ball. Like, Gina, like, hello. Yeah, and hello. shout out to Gina. Yeah, then you got Sherelle, and you know, she just wants to be like the martyr. Like, if somebody stubs their toe, she's like, let's <laughs> fix it. Let's just fix their toe. And I'm like, fuck their toe. Are they paying? So it's hard <laughs> because we're different. And then, um, the, you know, my man, you know, he's on there. But he's only, he's done with his appearance. So he is, he won't be on the show anymore. Um yeah. Yeah, he's he's dropping out of the show. He was never a social media person. Okay. So it's a lot for him to wear, like, mm -hmm. this is my lifestyle. And it can get inundating, like, for a lot of people if they're not used to social media. Because it's it's not for everybody, you know? <laughs> um, and he was just like, why is everybody, these people, questions and, and everybody looking? And then it's like, if, if, if we blink the wrong way, they think we got problems. Like, what kind of shit is this? And I'm like... I'm like, I don't know. Like, it is what I'm like, I don't yeah. know. It's just what it is. I'm used to it. Yeah. But for it's not for everybody. Um, but I feel like I pour a lot because it's like, I feel like a lot of the shit is redundant. Like, people, you'll go on Clubhouse, they'll be like, what is a Jurat? And there'll be seven rooms on what the fuck a Jurat is. And it's like, are you kidding? Like, yeah. serious? Or they'll be like, the sky is falling. When I don't, I can't this is my business. And if the sky is falling and loan signing or something stops, I still got to pay my bills. I still got three kids to take care of. Mm -hmm. So to sit in rooms where everybody's like, Oh my God, everybody run, run for the hills. I can't do that. Like, I'm like, right. we got to hustle. Like, all right, get up, dust yourself up, man up. Let's do it. What we doing? We niche him. We change him. We market research. What, what we doing? Um, and not everybody has a hustle and that drive. So I come off like real aggressive, but it's really to make people successful and to be able to make ends meet. Because we all, everybody got mo money problems. Even millionaires have money problems. Everybody always want more money. I don't care yep. how much money you make. You always going to want more money. You're always going to need more money. Life happens. Everybody has money problems. But to sit in a room and complain about it instead of hustle and dig your way out, I don't like being around that shit. 
<laughs> so I can't. And, and, and that's so true. And if you don't believe Dominique speaking the truth, go read the Wall Street Journal. They all have money problems. If they make making two billion, they want to make three billion. So they all have money problems. I know you have a couple of offers that's going on right now for the holiday season. Share it with the family. Yes. So we're offering fifty percent off of all H and A courses, but it's only until eleven twenty seven. Okay. Oh. Just till eleven twenty seven. Just because you know the blood, sweat, and tears to create the classes, to create the slides, to pay for oh, the yeah. platforms and everything. Like it it kinda hurts me to put on a sale. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it hurts. Indeed. It, it, it hurts, you know, because you create your stuff and you putting it out and you're like, man. Um, but it's the holidays. My birthday's December first. So you know we gotta oh, have that. Sagittarius, just like me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so my birthday is the first. Sherelle's is the twelfth. So December, we gonna have a whole bunch of birthday stuff going on. Um, but we definitely just want to be there for everybody. We have our discovery calls. We have our one on one. We have sixteen classes that we teach, and we have our member zooms, and we we go live, and we have our podcast, and we have our shows, and we're everywhere. And if you ain't seen us, you will. <laughs> so Indeed. it is what it is. So how can they uh, find it? They can go to HoustonNotaryAcademy.com or they can go to my page or Lovely Notary's page and they can click the links. Houston Notary Academy has an Instagram as well. We're all over you TikTok. YouTube. You said YouTube Notary We're Academy. We're on YouTube. Oh. Houston Notary Academy is on YouTube. Lovely okay. Notary is on YouTube. Um, she's Lovely Hustles, I believe, on there because she's switching her niche. You know, we're all about transforming and moving with the times and the market. Um, so, yeah, it's just like we're teaching resilience and strength and strife and making your money and how to life happens. Life is life happens. Life, life happens. So I put it in the chat, you guys. Uh, YouTube, you could go to Houston Notary Academy. What about um, for them to take part of that 50% off, though? They did, They can use, they go to HoustonNotaryAcademy.com. They can look at all our courses and templates, and then they use the code H-N-A-B-F. And that is the code for the 50% off. So whatever they want, put in that promo code, and then it is yours for half price. What what's the promo code? H N A B F. B as in boy, F as in Frank. I'm typing it in. H N A B F. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, Black Friday. Yes. I go to Houston Notary dot Houston Notary dot com or Houston Notary Academy dot com. Got it. Girl, you know I'm going to put cooking? the battery in the back. Are you cooking tomorrow? I don't cook shit but pasta. <laughs> You're not making up pasta? I might make my famous pasta, which is just spaghetti and water. Uh -uh. <laughs> Me, I'm only cooking my, my, because I will only eat my own food. I don't eat what other people cook. It's supposed to be a bunch of people. I'm like, if I'm going to eat, I'm just going to cook my food. I'll cook enough for everybody, but I don't eat behind people. <laughs> so yeah, my my in-laws be throwing down every uh, Thanksgiving, so they're going to make that whole shindig. I'm going to just show up, eat, and then go do my, you know, handle my business. Yes, but where my family lost me was... I don't know what happened these last couple of years because this is my first Thanksgiving with my family in like five years. And okay. they were talking about some like, oh, we're going to have green bean casserole. I said, what the fuck? What is that? I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> I was like, I don't want that. I want collard greens. I don't want no green bean casserole. What is that? Yeah, no. that, that would sound very appetizing. No. And then somebody who I know can't cook was talking about, I'll make the baked mac and cheese. Uh-uh. You ain't messing with my starch. I got it. I <laughs> got it. Okay? Because we season well, for our ancestors. Well, that's, that's awesome that you meeting up with the fam in a long time. That should be a hell of an experience. We'll see. We'll see. Because, you know, I'm one to leave. I'll be like, 
Like, yeah, I, I'm gonna kick yeah. off. Just be like, yo, y'all have a good night. Right. And if it's in your house, you'd be like, all right, all y'all niggas gotta go. Uh, listen, I will turn off all the lights where everybody's sitting in there. I will go to the to electricity box and go. I will shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> I am not the yeah, one. Like the, I will call the like cops the and say if there's a loud disturbance in the area and have them. I will call the cops in my own house. You're like <laughs> the reverse of a nightclub and shit. They turn the lights on you. <laughs> At Dominique's house, she turns the lights off. I turn like, them yeah. off. Okay. I'm quick to go, go, Alexa, play lullabies. That is it. We going to sleep. Good night. <laughs> like and you, you, the one that brought that green bean casserole, take that shit with you. Get out of here. No, listen, if they really bring the green bean casserole, I'm making a TikTok with it. I already picked the sound, the Jeffrey, the Jeffrey Dahmer sound. So if you see that TikTok, you know. They try yeah. to do it. <laughs> like, so just oh, stay tuned because you know I'm quick. I'm quick with it. I already got it planned. Hey, Anything I, look I, nasty, I'm going to be right there. I'm not eating that. What is that? <laughs> yes, what is that? But, yeah. Oh, good. So if I don't talk to you by, by you know, tomorrow, happy holidays to you and your fam. Yes. Happy holidays to you and your family. Send my love to your wife and your kiddos. Yes, and yes. And, 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 and I, I pray that the BBL comes through, right? You know right, because I mean? Big Jarrett, right? <laughs> right, look. Baby, you going to get me that? You're going to get it. You're going to get it. <laughs> well, that's you guys have trigger. a great Remember time. Remember, I went yeah. live that night and you was dying. Yeah. That's it. Oh, I was crying. I wasn't dying. I was crying. You like, never tears. saw the live. <laughs> the tears was coming out both eyes because I was laughing so hard, yo. I had never seen, like, you are a disruptor for sure, for sure. <laughs> Hands down. Like, they're like, I was like who I am I dropping into the notice like, industry? Try with me. I think oh. that's going to be a trial of <laughs> it, No, it is, it is the best. It's it, Because for me, it's refreshing. Because uh -huh. it's like, I get tired of seeing the same cats with plaid shirts on and shit. And they, uh, you know, it's like, I was like, that doesn't do it for me. I was like, I want to see, like, how people are incorporating real life stuff with some business. And they're having fun doing both. They're making money and having fun. You do that shit so well. It's hilarious. Everybody was cracking up. I was like, I brought my computer, but it was a date. And I didn't know. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, I don't know. I was like, but you know, he's tall. Wait, how did, how did your mister deal with that? Huh? How does your mister deal with that? To deal with live? He doesn't, he's not a social media person. Like, he thought that YouTube shorts was TikTok. Like, he is not. He's not social media, like, at all. But for me, for me, like, I got, because he loves me enough to, like, try it. So he did try it. Um, he don't have no choice. Like, if there's, like, a sound on TikTok that's trending and it requires a man to be there, he going to be back on social media. <laughs> But other than that, he's just not heavy in it. It, it takes him getting used to. God bless you, brother. <laughs> he deals with a lot. Deals with a lot. But it's worth it, right? Of course. See? Train hey, as well. Gotta keep the wife happy, man. <laughs> hey, until, until then, you guys, I will talk to you guys soon. I wish you guys a happy holiday. Love, you love. To New York from New York. You know how we do. You keep that same energy and keep your foot on their neck. You heard? Of course. I'll I will talk to you soon. Bye. Peace.